questions today surrounding Donald Trump's $175 million civil fraud bond that he posted last week. New York Attorney General Letitia James is asking for more information about the entity that backed the bond, Knight Specialty Insurance Company, and whether it would be able to actually pay up. A New York judge will hold a hearing on the matter on April 22nd, but there are other questions here, too. Joining me now, Renato Mariotti, a legal affairs columnist for Politico and a former federal prosecutor. Renato, what are the New York AG's concerns here? Is it possible that they could end up rejecting this bond altogether? It is possible. Essentially, the bond company didn't post the typical paperwork that you would expect a bond company to post in this circumstance. Essentially, a, what's equivalent of, let's say, a certificate that shows that they're able to uh, handle these sorts of bonds in the state of New York uh, and the, the other sorts of paperwork that usually is filed with the bond. So the, the AG is understandably uh, concerned about that because obviously, you know, you could have some companies say that they have this money but not have it really, and a lot is riding on that uh, from the perspective of the state of New York. So the judge is going to get to the bottom of it and— if it's just an oversight, so be it. Uh, but if it's not, well, there'll be more to the story. Yeah, because the billionaire owner of the entity that backed the bond, his name's Don Hankey, he says he approached Trump about offering his services even before the bond got reduced on appeal from $454 million to $175 million, still staggering amounts. But ProPublica is reporting that Trump's attorney's apparent failure to disclose those discussions could violate ethical rules. Why would that be a problem? So Trump's attorneys made representations to the court saying that it is literally impossible for a company to provide this bond. We as attorneys actually are held to higher standards uh, than a typical citizen. I know that sometimes the joke's the other way, right, that attorneys are less honest. <laughs> actually, the professional responsibility rules require us to be more honest and more forthcoming, particularly to a judge, particularly to a tribunal. They had said that this was just impossible, a company could do it. You know, if if then very shortly thereafter, a company comes forward and says, oh, yeah, we could take care of this. Mm -hmm. You know, they you have a duty to clarify that and to update that to the court. So you're not making a misimpression on the court. Really, that gets down into the weeds in terms of when they found out and exactly what this company told them. Yeah, but then there's also questions about the charges involved here, because Hanke told Reuters that they thought it would be an easy procedure that wouldn't involve other legal problems. And it's not turning out that way. He said, quote, we probably didn't charge enough. And usually surety companies charge one to two percent the face value of the bond. But why would how much he charges here be scrutinized by the court? Well, I think the concern is whether or not this is essentially, um, is he providing some sort of uh, benefit or are there other promises that have been made to him? Uh, what exactly is being put up? I think that given the, particularly the fact that this is a high profile matter and the uh, on the other side of the, of the V, so to speak, in the lawsuit uh, versus it's it's the state of New York and the people of the state of New York. So obviously the judge has to make sure that the people of the state of New York uh, aren't going to be left holding the bag here with a company that perhaps doesn't really have uh, the backing that it needs to pay that money. Uh, if, in fact, it becomes due. Yeah, it makes sense why they'd want to look into it. I want to also look ahead, though, to the New York hush money trial, which begins April 15th. That's just about a week away. NBC's learned that former White House communications director Hope Hicks is expected to be a witness. Obviously, I was with her the entire 2015 and 2016 campaign. And her time as a campaign press secretary in those final weeks before Trump's election is going to be at issue. Hicks, for her part, says she wasn't involved with the hush money discussions at the time and that she didn't become aware of Stormy Daniels' allegations until early November 2016. What could she reveal in her testimony, though? So there were records from the federal prosecutors in particular who took a look at this um, that, that actually Hope Hicks was on conversations and in calls with Michael Cohen and Donald Trump, which is important, mm -hmm. okay? So Michael Cohen, uh, you know, you, you're usually... When you're talking to an attorney, I guess in this case, he's probably operating more as a fixer. Uh, but in any event, you're going to, you know, Trump at that point was being very forthcoming with Michael Cohen. She was in the thick of those conversations on phone calls with Trump and Cohen. She was texting with Cohen during that time period. And that really is important, Allie, because the intent matters here. 
Trump says that his intent in making these payments and covering up that fact in his books and records was essentially to spare his wife some embarrassment hmm. uh, from the fact that he was unfaithful. Um, the uh, attorney, the uh, excuse me, the district attorney uh, is alleging that this was actually part of a scheme to influence the election and that he lost interest in hiding this once he got elected president. His intent, his words on those calls and in those texts and so on is going to be very, very important. And that's where I think Hope Hicks will be an important witness for the prosecution. Yeah, certainly going to be interesting to see. Renato Mariotti of Politico, thank you for joining us.